perhaps what's coming in is a customer transcript. There's a whole set of yes and no questions that we may want to ask about that from the customer profile to the subject to the product that the customer is actually working with, to information about that specific customer. And we want to use that yes, no determination, classification of that text, to then determine the routing and the next steps in the processing and the automation of it. Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. We are pretty excited. We're announcing the launch of our Slim Boolean model. Yet another model that we're adding into our Slim model family. These are small, specialized models that have been fine-tuned on a specific function and then to output structured language outputs like Python dictionaries and lists and SQL and other things that can be handled programmatically. Now, what is the Slim Boolean model? Well, it's a fancy way of saying something that actually all of us do every single day, which is yes, no questions. If you think about, you know, in almost any discussion that you have with someone, a debate, a dispute, a fight, you're talking to your boss, trying to net something down, it's like yes or no, true or false. Did this happen? Did it not happen? So yes, no questions are really at the heart of both a lot of classification capabilities. It is the ultimate classification. Do I go this way or do I go that way? It's also in some ways ultimate summarization or information compression. Boil this whole text down to basically this one thing. Is it this or is it that? It also comes up very often, not just in factual issues, but oftentimes around thresholds of, you know, is this above a certain you know, financial threshold or a numerical threshold? Is it below it? Is it inside it? Under what the text says, does this apply or does it not apply? So yes, no questions are ultimately at the heart of a lot of complex business decision-making. And one of the ways that we see it is you know, in thinking about a lot of multi-step complex processes you may be looking to automate using LLMs. The idea behind the Slim Models is that you can bring in and start to orchestrate in a multi-model way some complex workflows that have decision points in it. And the Boolean model is really almost the central decision maker in a lot of cases, yes or no. So perhaps what's coming in is a customer transcript. There's a whole set of yes and no questions that we may want to ask about that from the customer profile to the subject to the product that the customer is actually working with, to information about that specific customer. And we wanna use that yes, no determination, classification of that text, to then determine the routing and the next steps in the processing and the automation of it. So the way that we looked at it was a very common scenario is you have that type of input context passage and you have a very basic question. And in this case, we're thinking about it perhaps in a different context. Perhaps this is a, you know, a financial you know, piece of information. And the question is, did revenue increase in the current quarter? Yes or no. And ultimately with a question like this, there are really three things typically that we're looking for as an output. The first is the answer, the bottom line, the yes or no, don't tell me anything else, yes or no. Second thing then is an explanation, some type of supporting information from that text that led to that determination of the yes or no. And then the third thing is some type of confidence level because even people, we make mistakes sometimes when we're doing this. It's always helpful to get a sense of, you know, were you 50-50 on this one? Were you 80-20? Or were you 100% confident that you had the right answer? So what we typically find in a Boolean question, looking and reading some kind of text passage, comes down to these three aspects of an output that we're looking for. And this is what we've had in mind in creating the Slim Boolean model. So with this as a background, let's go over, let's flip into the code. And as always, if you've been following this series of videos, some of the new models that we've been bringing in Slim, the code is really, really simple. It is easy to get started using these models in LLMware. First step, as always, we're gonna look up and we're gonna load the model from the catalog. It's gonna pull down from the LLMware repository in Hugging Face. The first time that you pull down this model, It'll probably take you know one minute, maybe two minutes, depending on your bandwidth, but then it will be cached locally. And every time after that, when you load the model into memory, typically it's only a few seconds. The model will be loaded in memory and you can start running inferences locally from your own machine. We're gonna go and we're gonna get the test script. So within that package with the Slim Boolean model, we include in the configuration file all the information about how to prompt, how to wrap, all the inputs and outputs that come from the model. We also include a sample test set. So we're gonna pull that sample test set and then the core of our demo is we're gonna be looping through it. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pull a question out of that sample. We're gonna see it on the screen so you can actually look at it. Then we're gonna add 
this optional kind of experimental parameter that we've been working on that just you're going to say to the model in paren explain what we're then going to do is we're going to initiate a function call on the model we're going to pass the context which is a passage in this case that they're all financial kind of press releases we're going to start with that context passage we're going to apply the function of boolean so the model knows that the expected output is either a yes or no and the model has been trained to respond appropriately and then the question that we're going to pass is that question that yes no question with this optional explain parameter I'm going to skip over. I'm going to come back and explain what this is. We're going to look at that in the second step of the demo. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to call the model and then we're going to print out the output so you can see what the model does and how it works. All right. So as I said, the model is loading. Once it's cached locally, it takes just a few seconds. What we're printing on the screen is that question. You know, all of these are yes, no questions. You see that explain uh, characteristic. And then right after that, you see what looks like a Python dictionary. It is a Python dictionary. That is the LLM response. And the LLM response, because this is a function calling model, is giving us a Python dictionary with two keys. The first key is answer. That is the Boolean classification. That's yes or no. And then the explanation, which is some text from that passage that was used to actually come up with that decision of the Boolean classification. Now, as we scroll through this, again, keep in mind, we didn't need a complex instruction. It was fine-tuned and specialized on this Boolean function. So it understands that that's what it's gonna do and that's the kind of output that it's going to provide for us. It's all running locally. And when you scroll through this, the answers look pretty good. So syntactically, we've captured these are nice Python dictionaries in every case. The value of answer and explanation is a list. And the answer that we're getting is always a yes or a no. Some of these explanations look pretty good. A couple of them don't. Again, we'll come back and, and we'll take you know, a better look at that when we're done. But what we did is we just, we clicked through 20 of these questions. You can see they're, they're fairly basic factual types of questions, but all with information that could be derived from the passage that we passed. The punchline, and again, you guys can go through this. All this is available in our repository. The model actually got 19 of the 20 yes, no classifications right. It did get one wrong, and I can actually show you which one that is. So it got this one wrong. Revenue was actually in line with expectations, not higher than expectations. So the explanation in this case was a little wrong too. It was right looking at 2% and thinking about expectations, but in this case, 2% equals expectations. It wasn't greater. So it was 19 out of 20. It got 95% right of the classification decisions. I think is that's at the high end of what you should expect. Depending on the nature of the questions, the nature of the domain materials, I think 80 to 90% for Boolean question answerings to get that decision right is probably a range that I think is realistic and achievable. Now, if you're asking mission impossible possible types of yes, no questions with all kinds of, you know, complex, you know, rules and logic, it'll probably be less than that. If you're asking really, you know, give me easy questions, it might be higher than that, it might be in the 90 to 100 percent range. But in that 80 to 90 percent, I think is what we've seen in our testing as a realistic baseline expectation of how accurate that yes, no classification is going to be. And then in the explanations, they're pretty good. So there's some that's sort of cool, like it's pretty nice that it captured the 10.4% was the sales growth rate and that in fact that's greater than 8%. That's pretty nice. A couple of these other explanations here, the actual answer was 875 is greater than 800. So it got the number wrong of 885. So the explanation was a little off. Here the explanation was really not too helpful to saying, you know, Dell. Dell was the company, but saying Dell was the explanation is really not too useful. But generally speaking, you can see most of the explanations are on point. They tie into the logic of what the question was being asked and they're fact-based. They're all derived from the underlying source material. So that is how easy it is to start doing you know, Boolean classification questions with explanation using the slim Boolean model. Now, what I wanna come back to is the point that we skipped over at the very beginning, which was, what is this? Well, one of the areas of our research where we see a tremendous amount of potential is in really doing a lot of work looking at the logit analysis that comes out of the model and understanding that probability distribution and some of the choices that the model makes. And we've baked that into this function of get FX scores. And then we're gonna print out that analysis of what comes from it. And now we're gonna rerun this, but now you're gonna see a little bit more on the screen of the output that shows what were the choices that the model was looking at at each step of this process. 
So as it continues to scroll down, we're gonna focus on just one of these. So first line should look familiar. That's what we just looked at in the first time we ran this example. The second line is what's new. That's the analysis. And what we do in this function is we look at what we think of as the value zone. If you think of all the tokens that are produced in a single model generation, I mean, in effect, that's all of this. When we're talking about the value zone in a function calling model, we're actually looking at the value that's associated with a key and in the way that we've trained the model, that's always inside brackets. It's always inside a Python list, ASCII 91, ASCII 93. And then we look at the tokens that are inside those value zones, because that's the area that we're most interested in, what choices the model was looking at and what it was considering. So in this case, what we see, and we're just providing the first logit that was looked at, is 99% it was a no. So it wasn't really considering yes, you can see in some of these other choices, it does provide that it, it was considering, yes, in some areas in a very, very small amount, in some areas in a much bigger amount, but it gives you that insight then to start to look at, all right, how confident in, in effect was the model that yes was the right answer versus no was the right answer. Now the logit analysis as it relates to the explanation, it's interesting just to see what tokens was the model considering it's material that could be used for perhaps a more complex analysis to look at the accuracy, quality, other alternative potential explanations. But generally speaking, it isn't as straightforward to interpret as that classification decision of the yes, no, and looking at what was the token. When that model got to that first bracket inside answer, what were the choices that it was considering as a window into the probability that we could expect the confidence level of the accuracy in the model? And then finally, what we provide is a sampling stats dictionary. And now in this case, we had sampling turned off. So there was no stochastic generation. It was actually picking the top token as predicted by the logit distribution. But what these sampling stats provide so you can analyze this are first, how many tokens were in that value zone? In this case, it was 15 and all of them were from the top selection from the model. But then it also gives you a view if in any cases, the not top token was taken, what was that token and what was the choice? It again gives you another tool to start making decisions around what kind of sampling strategy you wanna take and what kind of impact that sampling strategy is having on the accuracy that you're seeing from the model. This is Slim Boolean. We think it is really, really cool. We are calling it an experimental model. And what we mean by that is there are some new concepts and ideas that we're trying to work through here. The idea of an explain capability or an explain key to be provided in a function calling model as a way to ask the model, explain to us some of the capability of what you were looking at. We see that as something that's gonna to continue to evolve and get better. And also then, you know, the Boolean classification, you know, one thing that was a little worrying to us as we were going through this, a lot of these classifications are really high. That suggests to us the model is too confident in the classification. We probably need to go and continue to work on additional rounds of training and fine tuning of the model to sharpen the accuracy of some of those classifications. So any questions, as always, please come check us out on Discord. Thank you everybody. Take care and have a wonderful day.